Okay, question. Do you like penicillin on your pizza? Here's your look at the new NECA Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, Donatello. Now you can catch America's favorite green teens in their first live-action blockbuster film. After waiting in a puddle of radioactive waste, these radical reptiles are transformed into New York City's greatest crime-fighting quartet. Donatello is the turtle's resident techno-genius, but make no mistake, he's a world-class with a bow staff. This highly detailed action figure stands 6.5 inches tall and features 30 points of articulation, including double elbows and double knees to fully showcase Donatello's magic mastery of the martial arts. Okay, Turtle fans, before we get a look, a closer look at Donatello, I know you're as anxious about it as I am. Let's first figure out how tall the figure stands, okay? Sounds good? Sounds good. Let's stop the Ultra Measuretron right there. To the very top of Donatello's head, you're looking at a figure that stands 6.2 inches in height, which in centimeters, let me go ahead and do that right now for you, more than happy to oblige, you're looking at a figure almost 16 centimeters tall, 15.9. Obviously, as we continue through these videos, I'll do comparisons with each of the turtles with their previous reviewed turtle. So here we have right now, this is the only other figure that we had a look at, the Leonardo figure here on the left. It does seem like the figures are roughly about the same height. Uh, Body-wise, their shell height seems about the same. I do feel like it might have even look, it might actually even look like Leo's is slightly taller. It might even be just a difference in the sculpting of the shell. We'll do some comparisons in a second. Before, though, we get to the comparisons, let's have a look at the accessories that come included with the figure. I guess this also will lead itself into a bit of, of a comparison because my friends and colleagues of the interweb the Donatello figure does come with the still rather disgusting slice of pizza in my own honest opinion comprised of some really disgusting looking olives and even further some really gross looking slices of anchovy if I do some comparisons though it does seem like I almost dropped it there for a second it seems like it is the same slice the one that came with Leonardo this was Donatello's, this was Leonardo's. They do look like they are identical to one another. Except for maybe the extra cheese that's on them. Hopefully no penicillin. Uh, yeah, they do, uh, they do look like they're rather gross slices of pizza. Things of which I would not certainly be interested in eating. If this was sitting on the counter, rest assured, you could come back several weeks later. These slices would still be there. Bit of a pizza snob? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I am. But uh, they do come with those. From the looks of it, it also looks like Raphael and Michelangelo will also come with the exact same slices. So there is some familiar accessories included here. And then you get a couple of different ones as well. Like, for example, Donatello comes with these pairs of hands, which will kind of be like pointing hands, if you will. If we just do a comparison with Leo's hands. Now, Leo had two of these hands. These are sort of like the high five hands. So it does give you some flexibility, being that they're sort of in the same way that NECA handles a lot of their Predator figures. One figure may only get this hand, but then if you get another figure, it may have the hand with the same sort of paint scheme that you could just use this one for Donatello. Sorry, somebody says, no, that's only for Leonardo. No, you can also use this one for Donatello. You pick up these figures, you can do whatever you want with them. So one is sort of a pointing hand. This man, maybe this guy knows where a Splinter is. You use that pointing hand. Or once again, the Cowabunga high five hand. A couple of different options there as well. And as we, of course, will look at Michelangelo and Raphael, likelihood they're probably also going to come with variations of the hands that you can then mix and match with the turtles. Just in case you are interested to see how that comes together, as I didn't really do it with Leo, I'm gonna pop the hand off of the socket section here. And let's say we wanna use the pointing hand, why not? It was included with Donatello. There you go, you can have him pointing. You, over there. <laughs> I, I don't know. Funkazoid or Funkoid, I'm trying to think of. He goes through the alphabet, of course, with Casey Jones. So there's that option there as well. One of the other cool accessories he comes included with as well, similar to Leo's, he comes also with the inverted version of the bandana. What do you mean by that? Well, let me answer to the mob. 
uh, you'll notice that the bandana faces on this side. Now, anyone could easily just say, well, why can't you just turn it around? Oh, see, it doesn't work that way. See, see, it doesn't work that way. If you wanna get the flipped over version, you can just detach the bandana that's located on the back there. Just unpeg it, replace it with the one that you wanna use. Just gonna wiggle that back into place. It does seem like the peg would be larger than the hole, but if you just twist, persistence is key. Uh, then you can bring the bandana around and now lo and behold it's on this side oh wait a minute weren't you just over there it was over there see and see now uh, going the neat thing about this is being that it is pegged in place once again if you wanted to incorporate some natural effects in nature wind blowing for example <sighs> You can have the bandana looking as if it's blowing in the air. I kind of like that. I think that's neat. For the rest of this review, I'll probably just keep this bandana in place. Okay, somebody's saying, go back to the original. Go back to the original. Okay, we'll go back to the original. Seriously, if you were yelling in the back of the crowd, you could have spoke up a bit. You're, whisper you're yelling a very loud whisper. So we put it over on this side. I do actually notice, uh, going back to that point made, uh, this side, it doesn't seem to drape as low as this one does over here. I think it's probably just a case of if you wanted to heat this a little bit, you could probably manipulate that a little bit more to get that to sit over across the shoulders. It just so happens the one that gets out of the box with him already sort of has that relaxed nature that it just sits naturally on the shoulder. And of course, Donatello would be not complete. You'll excuse me, I'm just going to move that blech, slice of pizza out of the way would not be complete without a bow staff. Now he only comes with one bow staff. He's the only turtle to come with, as far as I know, one of the two accessories. Every other turtle seems to have pairs of whatever they're carrying. Nunchucks and sai, for example. Yes, I said sai, not plural, size. Uh, so like I said, Donatello only comes with one bow staff. Uh, there is really technically a place that you could put it. Uh, the way that his strap is, it's just slightly loose enough that you can drape drape the bow actually into that. I want to talk a little bit about this in a second. Just kind of remind me if you can. So that sits very, like I said, there's just enough of a clearance gap right there. There it is right there. That you can fit the staff through. Uh, you know what, I'm going to talk about it right now because I do feel like I'm going to forget about this. Unlike Leo, and actually let's turn them around right now to do some comparisons with the, the shells. Yes, the shells are different. There you can see. Fewer, pla fewer plates of the shell on Donatello, a little bit bigger than Leo's smaller, but he has, seems to have more of them. Now his sheaths that hold his katanas, as you can see right there, these are just separate plastic. Now the, the concern I do have though, and I'll just put Leo there for a second, the, the concern I do have, though, is with this being loose, if you're constantly prying this away, I don't know, I don't suspect plastic will be the issue in which this is going to break on you. I thought this looked like a stress mark initially. I think it's just the way it's been painted. They just conveniently right here, and maybe, actually, if you look at it in the film, it might even be in that same place, too. There's like a natural wear, or at least the painted notion that there's natural wear. And this might just be the case that the strap, of course, in the movie, wanting to make it look realistic, this is the part that would wear back and forth on the on the shell edge here. So maybe Neck actually deliberately went in there and dry brushed this section so that it looks like it would be naturally wearing as it moves back and forth on the shell. If that's the case, that's a really nice little touch. So like, there, like I said, there is a place technically where you could put the staff Nine times out of 10, I'll probably just be likely displaying the turtles with their corresponding weapons in their hands. Donatello, probably not likely that because that's a little boring, but I'll most definitely be displaying the turtles with all of their corresponding weapons. Let's put that to the side, as certainly I only have one of those. I certainly don't want that to break. Let's compare, sorry, Leo, I turned you around. Compare the two turtles side by side Faithful, I must say, to the movie is Donatello. He sort of has a more duck bill to him. Uh, the top of his mouth here, as you can see, sticks further out from his bottom, whereas Leonardo doesn't have that, as you can see right next side by side. My favorite designs in the movie were Leonardo first, 
Michelangelo second, and then sort of a toss-up between Donatello and Raphael. To the credit of the filmmakers, all the molds, all the head sculpt portraits are very different from one another. They're, it's not simply just, this is Michelangelo, we're just putting a yellow, uh, an orange bandana around him, this is Leo, blue bandana, and so on and so forth, rinse and repeat. No, they do have definitely distinct looks to them. I don't care as much for Donatello's look with that over-exaggerated upper lip versus Leo. Leo's always been like my preferred favorite look from the films. But I do like the fact that all the film characters, all the different turtles, look so different from one another. Now, same paint work as well executed here on Leo gets very nicely done here also on, on Donatello. Even areas in which the shells connect to one another via these little side, I don't even know if you would still, I guess that would still would be the shell. As you can see, there has been, much like Leo's, a nice dry brushing of black paint has been added in the interior there. Spots and freckles and all the other things that would make up their skin in the movie also here very faithfully applied to their six scale or six inch counterparts, I should say. You get all little speckles here. Again, that light, slightly lighter brown has been painted on some of the shoulder areas. Something I didn't even mention with Leonardo, I can talk a little bit about Donatello. The beauty of really doing these as individual reviews is that if I feel like I've left something off of one, I just have to remind myself to cover those bases when I'm looking at the next figure. So something I could talk about here is this glorious dark green that they've put around, accenting the areas around the muscle, you know, the the uh, the shoulder section right here, even down the forearm, all get these little, I don't want to even call it panel lining, but it certainly does accent the muscles. It's just outlining the areas around the arms and natural bends in which the arms would be moving. Even like the, the legs certainly get that as well. All the little creases, all the areas where there would be natural muscle on the legs, they've just added this kind of green paint right here. All you can see in those little cre uh, creviced areas. Of course, much like Leo and all the other turtles, the elbow pads, the wrist straps, and the knee guards or knee pads all share this kind of dark mocha brown. I really like that design as opposed to giving them distinct colors. I know I talked about that part with Leo, but I really like the fact that the consistent color palette here is the greens and the browns. And the only indicator that you get for each turtle being unique is the coloring of the bands, the headband, that is. Love the portrait again. Even though, again, it's not my favorite turtle design, you got to admit, though, NECA has put a lot of time, a lot of care, and a lot of detail into all of these pieces. I like also the fact that the eyes are further sunken back. Uh, you get the furrowed brow, the light, the higher up eyebrow section. I don't even know if they would have eyebrows, but the browed section of their faces. And I like that the eye area is actually further sunken into that. You get that sense of depth. Uh, as we look further in, again, something else that I didn't mention with the Leo is that the areas inside the shell or closer to the shell, you get a little bit more of a darker shade, a natural shade that would happen because again, their very large heads would be blocking off a lot of the light that's coming down here. And I like the fact that they've added that dark green down there as well. The shells get a natural kind of evolution of transitioned colors from darker edged browns. And then as it gets closer to the center area of the shell, you get a much lighter natural color there in the yellow. I love that. Most, if not all of it is tried and true, like all the stuff that we liked so much, I certainly liked so much about the Leonardo, gets carried over here to Donatello. But as you can see, like differences, there are, there are in fact, yes, differences. Even like I noticed that like, the shell, Leo's shell sits closer to his, his, his torso, whereas Donatello's, let me just show you here, actually sits further back. It just naturally has a little bit more of a gap from the back of the shell to his torso. And you can see it's very clearly obvious there between Leo's and Donatello's torso. So there's a little bit of variation there as well. If you look at the front two, the shells do seem like they're slightly different. Obviously color is a little bit different from one another as well. I have to believe that the legs, the arms, and the hands for the most part are copies to one another. And obviously the head sculpts are very different from one another as well. We're going to move Leo out of the way because certainly I've spent a lot of time talking about him in the previous review. I don't want to steal the thunder here of Donatello because he's an equally good looking figure. 
Uh, for this guy's articulation, his head rotates all the way around. You gotta be very careful though when you are rotating the head that you don't accidentally clip the bandana. At the very least, it would probably just pop the bandana off. I guess, again, you've got posability happening here back and forth. The head rotates, like I said, all the way around. It hinges up and down. Very generous, by the way, amount hinging up and down. And it rocks back and forth. The shoulders rock out. A ratcheted, not quite a ratchet joint, but a hinge joint out. They rotate all the way around bend at two points in the elbow. Again, you're sort of limited by the fact that the elbow pad naturally takes up a real estate space on the arm. By this amount here, sort of forfeits a little bit of the hinge happening in the elbow. The arms still rotate back and forth. You could again rotate them all the way around and the hands also rotate all the way around. Whatever, whatever hand, I just happen to use this hand, but whatever hand you end up deciding to go with, there's that hinge and you can rotate them. Uh, these guys don't have any torso artic articulation. They don't have any waist articulation. Their legs split out till about there, forward and back, double hinge happening on the knee. And then you have the hinge back and forth on the foot with also an ankle rocker. Providing that you do have maybe possibly a display stand to assist with some of this, for the amount of articulation that these guys possess, you could get them in various different poses. At the very least, if you're just going to be standing them straight, eventually when you get all the other turtles in the set together, you could get yourself a group pose going. And again, I probably will make use of the Kawabunga high five hand gesture, at least on one of the turtles. For years, fans of the 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been desperately asking for movie accurate turtle figures. And up to this point, the only company that was able to do it was Playmates because they still own the licensing for the turtle brand. This meant that if you, along the ways, I think they had released two different versions of the movie Turtles, neither of which really did look like their movie counterparts. Sure, they put speckles and freckles on the turtles' faces and shoulders, thinking that that was enough and that collectors were happy enough with the results. And even though most collectors like myself had picked those up, we still really knew we were a long way from finally getting movie accurate turtles. Fast forward ahead of time and then of course now we've got NECA Toys finally helming the project. And while I will admit I was very anxious to get the one quarter scale turtles because I really thought that was the only way we could ever get movie turtles, I still didn't really like the fact that they were so big. You know my standpoint when it comes to the quarter scale NECA figures. As great as they are, one thing they do do is they take up a lot of space. So I still hoped and prayed that we eventually would get six and a quarter or six and a half inch turtle movie, movie turtles. Eventually now we're getting them, but there's still a catch. The catch is unfortunately these are GameStop exclusives. So again, the only way that you can get these is to go to your local GameStop, or if you're lucky enough, you could also have ordered these online. I did my best on the opening day to place an order here in Canada. And unfortunately, Canada seemed to have a real problem with credit card orders, ordering these guys online. I waited and got a lot of error messages. And eventually, when the order went through, the inventory was already gone. That's so sad. Unfortunately, I didn't also have a GameStop that I could readily go to in my area. So it did mean that I had to wait. And eventually, I did get the four figures. And finally, we're having a look at them here. To make a certainly a long story short, it was worth the wait because I can't think of any other company that would have done a better job than NECA Toys. I mean, faithfully recreating these turtles in plastic form. I said this with the final looks here at Leonardo. I'll say the same thing here with Donatello. If you get these in the outside light and you've got like a grassy background to them, if you get the angle just right on these turtles, they look like they were from, from the movie. They look like they were pulled right from the scenes themselves. That's certainly a credit to the company that produced them. And like I said, NECA really is the only company I think that would have handled this property well without really feeling like it was just a bit of a cash grab or they were just thrown out. Anything to the credit of Playmates Toys, they have run with the Turtle brand for a very long time and they've been releasing countless figures over the years. But the one thing they really couldn't do right that we only had to wait then for NECA to do was really true replicas of the turtles from the movie. Again, if you guys get the chance, do yourselves a favor and pick these ones up for yourself. But like I said, don't pay scalpers prices, whatever you do. It puts money into their pocket. At the very least, try your best. Just keep checking if you have stores in your area. Keep checking online, seeing if you can pay retail price for these. Certainly don't pay scalpers prices. That's the takeaway hopefully in these reviews hopefully 
get them for the price that they're asking for. Don't don't pay scalpers prices. That they're ridiculous. I loathe loathe scalpers. Either way, though, today we were having a look at the new NECA toys. This was the six and a half inch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the '90s classic film. Uh, we are, of course, going to be having a look at Donatello and Raphael. Those are going to be coming up in upcoming reviews, so stay tuned for those. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Certainly, even if you're not a Turtles fan, guaranteed there's going to be more videos coming onto this channel in different categories. Maybe there's going to be a category that you're interested in. Superheroes, horror fig figures, maybe some more Turtles stuff. Either way, there's always stuff coming onto this channel, so keep your eyes peeled. Never like saying that. I always end up saying it nonetheless. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. And I'll see you guys next time.